Right, 18 April 2024, and a happy independence to you all. Uh, Zimbabwe is celebrating 44 years of independence today. But I want to quickly go through what has happened. As I have been telling you over the past few months, we are now in the post Mnangagwa era. So the post Mnangagwa era has started. Mnangagwa is being replaced every single day as we move forward. The replacement, the replacement of Mnangagwa is happening in front of our eyes. And the people that know understand that there are various factors or various players that are going to come into play. And some people are going to be eliminated. Some people are going to end up on top. Some people are going to end up dead. So this is how it's going to be. And this is a very dangerous period. And what I've told my friends is that stay away from all sides. Do not go to either the one side or the other. Stay away from everything because it's going to get very, very dirty as we go forward. So what happened on Tuesday is that there was an accident at night at an area called Battlefields. So Battlefields is about 180 kilometers from Harare and there are a number of air bases or, or military bases over there. And what happened is that uh, a certain general called General Veja, Shadrach Veja, was trying to overtake a vehicle. So he was trying to overtake a car uh, and this car has not been found. This is the craziest thing ever. You cannot find that car where it is. In this accident report, official accident report, that car has not been found. And then as he was trying to overtake that car, he had a head-on collision with a CX-5, Mazda CX-5 vehicle. And the result was that four army officers died. And I'm going to give you the names of the four army officers who died. That is, uh, let's go to the list here. Uh, Major Tulan Ngube, Major Mkondis Ngumbo, and Sergeant Chakabaiwa. So there is an uncertainty on what has happened to General Shadrach Veja. It's not clear. So I've said he survived so that I don't make him dead when he's alive. But it's not clear if he's dead or alive or if they've taken him to a place where they can't find him. So General Veja, right now, there is questions on what has happened to him. Is he dead? Is he alive? Has he been put into some place by the military guys? The military guys are in control of the situation. But the ZBC last night reported that General Veja was dead. So it was survived the accident. So there was reports during the day in the morning that he had died. But the ZBC has reported that he's alive. So let me go through this report from the ZBC so that you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't want us to have hearsay. So this is General Veja here. Uh, he is Shadrach Veja. He was promoted to Brigadier General in 2018, February 2018, together with Wilfred uh, Kamusikiri, Nomen Matu Vunye, Joshua Chikanga, Jomus Ziwa, and Ernest Shamu. So that was the promotion that happened soon after the coup. This is a Chwenga guy. So it's a Chwenga guy. They are very close to General Chwenga. And as I was saying to you, the Chwenga team is being decimated. Uh, starting in the past uh, five years, the Chwenga team has lost over 50 generals. Uh, you can go to Gambako Media and look at the report called who killed the coup generals. It's got a list of 36 generals who have died. And they've got pictures. So I, we're not making this up. And now General Veja, who is a Chwenga guy, has survived an assassination attempt. We don't know if he's dead or alive. So I want to show you what ZBC said yesterday. And then I'll show you what other independent platforms were saying, especially the military platforms. So let's look at what the ZBC said last night so that you understand the context of what I'm saying here. The Zimbabwe Defense Forces ZDF has confirmed the death of four people, including army officers, in a road traffic accident which occurred near battlefields between Kwekwe and Kadoma this Tuesday. Brigadier General Shadrick Veja survived the accident. Right, so you saw that. Uh, they said 
he survived the accident. But it's clear uh, that other platforms who came up with the news, uh, so ZBC was forced to release this news. They didn't want to release it. But other platforms that belonged to the military had already uh, produced this information. So I want to take you to this Twitter account. Uh, and this Twitter account is called uh, Majiros, Majira Majiros. This is a military account. This is run by the Zimbabwe military. It says, General Veja, whose close friends with Munangawa's nephew, Cam bodyguard, Hitman, Valdano Brown, together with others, he perished last night in a setup accident on his way from his farm in Kwekwe. A close source has confirmed. So this is the first guy, Majira Jairos. He produced this thing yesterday morning. And the ZBC and the army only confirmed this in the night. And that is at 8 p.m. During the whole day, there was no confirmation of the death of this senior, very senior army officer and four other officers. So there's three other officers. And it's not clear if he's dead or alive. As I said to you, there's conflict right now. The, there is a possibility that Veja is alive. And there's a possibility that Veja is dead. The car that caused the accident cannot be found. It's not within the cars that had an accident. So when you look at an assassination attempt, so if you're watching a movie, uh, someone is driving happily along. I drive slowly in front of that person to force them to, to overtake at a blind cave. And I put my own other car on the other side. And I make sure that when he tries to overtake, he crashes into that car. That is why they call it an assassination. Uh, and this is why I think uh, there is a possibility that General Veja, if he survived this accident, then he could be somewhere where they are keeping him and they don't want him to be known. Because you, you saw that it's not clear. They're not saying who died. They're not saying who's alive. But the actual police statement, uh, army statement, is showing us who died. That the, there is four officers. But which four officers? So this is a very confusing situation. And it's a clear assassination. Uh, the, the, this was an assassination. And this is part of the succession politics of Zimbabwe. The succession politics of Zimbabwe is going to play out in the military. It's not going to play out in zanu -PF. There is no one in zanu -PF who is strong enough right now to take over. The General Chuenga is next in line. And as I said, he's not going to be allowed to take over without a fight. So what is going to happen is, as I said to you, the image a number of contenders and the contenders will say Chiwenga is next in line but we don't want him to be next in line then the contenders are obviously uh, the dynasty and you also have uh, the third force the third force is an independent group of people so a third force does not want Chiwenga does not want Mrangabwa does not want Chamisa it needs a new order so I said to you almost two years ago that there's a third force that is operating in Zimbabwe and the third force is made up of people that are fed up of the Chamisa and they're fed up of the Mnangawa and they want the new order. They also do not want the Chiwenga. So now what, what I said yesterday is the first of all take out Chiwenga completely. Everyone around Chiwenga will be taken out. Chiwenga will be taken out. Then they'll go to Mnangawa and take him out. Then you have the third force. A third force transitional authority is going to come into play. That is my prediction of what is going to happen. And as I said to you, these are my predictions. I'm not saying this is something that I know. It's my prediction based on what I've seen, that there's a third uh, force in operation. And the third force is not under the control of any of the parties. So the third force is in control of uh, military players, uh, political players, business players. And it's a real thing. It's big. It's something that is very, very powerful. And it's got a military muscle. They're able to do a lot. And Mnangagwa is not in control of what is happening right now. I don't believe that Mnangagwa is in control of everything. So I don't believe Mnangagwa is in control of all parts of the security structures. I believe that there are sections of the uh, security structures that are extremely strong by themselves. And they're able to push their agenda, a strategic agenda, which is to transform the political landscape in Zimbabwe. I believe that there are people that are fed up of the current situation. And uh, this is not something I'm saying today. It's a very old thing that I've been saying. So that is the, the, the accident. I don't know if that is the particular accident scene, but this is what I've been given, uh, that I've been shown. Uh, and I don't know what this is about, but I believe that 
this accident was an assassination, assassination attempt. It was staged because you can't find the car that caused the accident. You also don't have clarity on whether General Veja is dead or General Veja is alive. And the announcement came almost 12 hours after the accident. If it was a normal accident, within an hour we'll get all this. But up to today, we are only seeing this statement overnight. This has happened, that is, this has been announced overnight after about 8 p.m. last night. That is where the announcement of the uh, assassination or potential death of General Veja was confirmed. But ZBC is saying he's alive. So let's see today whether there is clarity on whether General Veja is dead. So Brigadier General is dead or alive. So General Veja here, uh, as I was showing you, he was promoted in 2018 uh, to Brigadier General. And that is the guy who is being uh, pinned there by uh, General Chimoyo. So you can see that this is a Chuenga guy. This was soon after the coup. And there is a bunch of other people that were promoted during this time. So very, very critical and dangerous time that you are entering as poli the political period in Zimbabwe. Some people are going to die <laughs> and it's going to happen in front of your eyes. It's history in the making and it's crazy. Now, let's quickly go to a few stories that I've got and I'm going to wrap up. I don't want to take your time today. It's a holiday. I need you guys to rest. And uh, similarly, Gambako needs to take a break. So let's go to... A new and uh, interesting development. Uh, Apostle Talent Chwenga had a number of pastors when he was in Zimbabwe. That used to preach with him at a place called Pagomba. One of the pastors is called Pastor Edmo Marange. And Pastor Edmo Marange has formed a political party. So if you go to Gambago.com, uh, JCTV Zimbabwe interviewed these guys yesterday. And this is Pastor Edmo Marange here. He is a pastor or was a pastor in uh, Apostle Chuenga's church. So you see that he says he is now forming this party. Go and watch this very, in very this, interesting uh, statement on behalf of our leader and the president, Michael Makaza, who is the leader of Freedom Fighters for Change in Zimbabwe, FFC. On this great day, allow me to honor fellow citizens. Right, so what you, you understand here, there is someone called Michael Makaza, and I do not know who Michael Makaza is, but Michael Makaza has formed a political party with which is fronted by uh, uh, Pastor Edmo Marange. You saw him there. He was the right-hand man of Apostle Talent Chuenga. So I do not know what this means, and I hope that Apostle Chuenga uh, is going to comment on this to say is he part of this new movement which is very radical they say they want to confront Mnangagwa they want a fight so you can go and watch that uh, video I also want to show you uh, Apostle or Pastor uh, Edmond Marange while he was preaching Pagomba uh, this is him you can see him preaching here uh, and I do not understand whether it's now part of the uh, Apostle Chwenga group or this is an independent thing so we'll ask him when you get an opportunity, I've never talked to these guys myself. So let's see here what we're saying here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Right, so you can go and watch on Gambakwe Media, Gambakwe.com, YouTube channel. Uh, we have the video of the actual launch uh, over there. They attended uh, a press conference and we managed to get footage from JCTV. Uh, thanks very much to the partnership with JCTV. We now have a constant stream of news in Zimbabwe on a daily basis so we get at least two videos a day from JCTV so please watch uh, the live interviews and the updates which come from JCTV on a daily basis I now want to look at Mnangagwa Mnangagwa has uh, released all female prisoners that are eligible so there's a bunch of female prisoners I think up to 4,000 have been released and then we have the Batoka uh, Gorge Hydroelectro Power project is going to be uh, restarted very, very soon. 
I now want to look at the newspapers, then we'll close. Uh, there is not much else that I want to look at today, uh, except that the ZIG is collapsing massively on the black market. We are now reaching 30 on the black market. And this is a very, very serious problem. Uh, Mushayavanu is failing and losing control of the situation before the actual currency comes. And the problem is the Zimbabwe government is not confident enough to use the ZIG as the only currency in Zimbabwe. So people are losing confidence and the banks have already started their black market operations. EcoCash is now being used once again for, for black market uh, inbox. That inbox uh, that they use is similar to EcoCash. They had to drop the platform yesterday uh, because of the huge amount of black market transactions taking place on those platforms. Airtime is being used as a conduit for selling uh, dollars and, and zig at ext astronomical uh, levels, the solution that I've presented have not been taken into account and in which other people uh, like uh, Professor Mugano, who is someone that loves the country. If you, if you listen to Professor uh, Mugano, he loves the country. You, you see the way he talks about the economy, that he cares about what's happening in the country. People have given advice to the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe and that advice has been ignored. This is why the ZIG is collapsing and crashing and it's going to move to a number that you cannot count uh, within the end of this. So Professor Mgano gives this a few months that this thing is going to collapse spectacularly when people start realizing that the ZIG is not backed by anything. The Zimbabwe government owes huge amounts of money and they have to keep printing. And when people start rejecting the ZIG, and starting to look for the dollar because the actual zig cannot buy dollars so michelle is talking a lot of stuff but it's not true most of what uh, the things that michelle is talking uh is just theories he is going to get what to call a baptism of fire uh michelle is going to get it because he doesn't know that he's working with people that are corrupt and whose only job is to destroy value and i'm nangagwa they are very good at destroying value uh if you give him a chance to destroy value, he will do it for you quickly. And this is what they're going to do here with the, the ZIG. We're going to all watch as it happens here. Uh, the ZIG is going to spectacularly crash because the players that are crashing the ZIG are the ones that are supposed to be protecting the ZIG. So, so let's see what is going to happen. And as I said to you, Nangaba's government is going to collapse within the next few weeks uh, they've tried to buy time but this government is no longer uh, sustainable it's not sustainable because everything that they're doing is just a waste of time uh, you, you can see Kuti, the level of hunger in the country has increased that is the statement of the year everything that we're going to say here is uh, now let me go to newspapers let's see if there are any newspaper that is published so the only newspaper that is published here is Newsday. Newsday doing very, very well. And it's leading with the story, I will report back if Zig fails. Arabi Z governor. The Arabi Z governor is saying if the Zig fails, he's going to report back. He has changed from his statement last week that he will crash the market. And Mnangagwa is going to change his name from Mr. Strong Zig to Mr. Z to Mr. Wiki Ziggy. <laughs> oh, Ziggy. Ziggy. Mafidi. <laughs> Wiki. Wicknell, yeah, that is going to be the new name now, Wick, Wicknell, Zig, yeah, because it's going to be so weak. <laughs> so I, I don't want to love it, the Zig too much, because I actually feel pain uh, when these things happen. But the solution is simple. Go back to the US dollar. Stop printing these strange currencies uh, that Mnangagwa is printing. And understand that uh, you cannot win when you are the corrupt person. Uh, so we don't have any newspapers. Let's go back to our headlines. But before I go back to our headlines, I want to comment on Passion Java. So Passion Java, I, I said I like Passion Java, right? But he's very disappointing to me uh, when he does these kind of things. So yesterday I saw Passion Java with Scott, uh, with Scott Sakupanya. This is very disappointing to me because as I said, Scott Sakupanya is implicated in the murder of Pastor Messiah. So Pastor Messiah was killed in Mavuku while campaigning, and his body was found after three days. The police in Zimbabwe, Wananyati, they refused to investigate the death of Pastor Messiah. 
And when we see uh, Scott moving Scott free around with the Passion Java, I myself uh, am changing my mind about uh, supporting Passion Java and everything that he does because I don't understand what is he prove, trying to prove. Could he, is he trying to show us could he, uh, maybe what we're talking is nonsense? The death of Pastor Messiah must be investigated. And I'm going to say, keep saying this until Anamas, uh, Ananyati, the police spokesperson, decide if they're thieves or they're police. If someone is killed, there must be an investigation. And the outcome of that investigation must be made public. The, past, the death of Pastor Masaya when he was campaigning and walking around without provoking anybody, he was abducted and his body was found after uh, a few days in Scott Sapphire's constituents. That must be investigation, uh, investigated, and Scott Sakupanya is responsible until that investigation is complete. Uh, Scott is responsible for the death of Pastor Masai until I see a report from the police that says how uh, Pastor Masai was killed. We need to see uh, that report. And the police in Zimbabwe are responsible until they make an investigation. The Zimbabwe Human Rights Commission is responsible for the death of Pastor Tafumane Masai if they don't investigate. And all the security agencies in Zimbabwe, they are responsible if they don't investigate the death of Pastor Messiah, who was killed while walking, doing nothing except walking and then in flyers. So we need to see that this is investigated. And uh, Passion Java, you must know that we don't support his friend, uh, Scott Sakupanya, in what they're doing. So whenever we see him or together with Scott, we're going to bunch him into that group. So uh, the things that I say about... Uh, Passion Java being a nice guy, when he starts associating with the guys that we say have committed a murder or they are responsible for a murder or their people are responsible for a murder, then we change our mind and we, we withdraw from that support of uh, uh, Passion Java. And it's also if we withdraw our support from someone, uh, we can do it 24 hours a day. <laughs> like I've got the necessary capacity to do it for five years uh, every morning uh, because I don't think it's right. Uh, to kill someone and then no investigation took place. Mapuru Zaku Zimbabwe, did you kill Pastor Masai? Why are you not investigating? That is the question that we keep asking. If you didn't kill him, investigate and find out who killed Pastor Masai. That is all I want to say about this issue. And then come around, let's look at the comment and say, Zignel. Yes, that is the new name of uh, of the Zig. So Nagakwa is going to change his name to Mr. Weak Zig, that is the new uh, currency, the, the, the strongest, weakest currency. Do you understand that? The strongest, weakest currency in, <laughs> in the side deck. <laughs> right, wrong predictions. You are saying I'm, I'm predicting the wrong thing, that we're entering the, uh, the post Nagawa era, where first they'll take out Chuenga and his team, then they'll take out Mnangawa, and then they'll establish a, a new order. So you're saying I'm wrong, uh, but I've been standing steadfast. Uh, and then Mkoma Kholi says, investigate the death of General Mjuru. There's an investigation on the death of General Mjuru. Uh, it's in a book. You can go and look at who killed uh, General Mjuru and why. And then Mkoma Respect says, what is going on to Baba with Veshanduko? I've asked uh, for the guys in CCC to give me an update. They've not given me an update. The question should be, what is happening to Chamisa? That is the question that you should be asking yourself. Uh, I'm very concerned about Nelson Chamisa. Sometimes uh, I, I feel like starting my, my thing of where is Chamisa, but I'm going to control myself right now <laughs> because if I start with Chamisa, it will be another thing. So I think le le let's wait and see what is happening. Uh, what I know is that um, uh, Jobs Color is going to be presenting at the Geneva Summit for Human Rights. He's going to be doing a presentation there i think it's this week i will let you know when he does the presentation and we're going to publish it here uh, chamisa has not tweeted and i do not know what is happening uh, i just saw in a tweet about independence which is independence is empty without dignity and happiness of the beneficiaries normally what chamisa does is comes out and he, he gives some full speeches which give us direction but currently that has not been happening he's being put under a lot of pressure i know what is happening and I want to control myself right now before I just produce more and more information about what's happening. But 
let's watch Chamisa. So there are two people you need to watch. You need to watch General Chwenga. You need to watch the military. And then you, want, you need to watch where Chamisa falls. Because if what I predict is correct, Chamisa is going to be totally taken out of the environment. General Chwenga is going to be totally taken out of the environment. And Nangabwa is going to be totally taken out of the environment. So you're going to have three major events upcoming. Those are the three major events. So I don't know how these guys are going to deal with it. And then God advises, <laughs> good morning, Zeke is a bond version, a bond version. To give values, government are supposed to take the first step and accept payment. Yes, we agree. And please follow the work of uh, Professor uh, Gift Mugano. That man loves this country. That man is supposed to be uh, the, <laughs> the Reserve Bank governor of this country. Mishavan has got no idea what he's doing. He does not know who he's dealing with. He is like a little fish swimming with sharks. That is Mshayavan. A little fishy. And, and he's moving around there. And the sharks are looking at him. They are going to deal with him very, very well. And then Gambako Zini Girnenge Bazer Gumusha. Rikareva Rimreng Unumunga Kutirunosia Ndege. Correct. So I think we are right. We, we, we have covered all this that is happening. And let's recap. And then we, uh, we, we end this. So let's start with what has happened. About 180 kilometers from Harare, there's a place called Battlefields. There is a general there who is aligned to General Chuenga and is called General Veja, Shadrach Veja. There was an accident in which, as he was driving, a slow moving car that has not been found, he tried to overtake it, and another oncoming car came in a head on collision with him. Currently, there are two conflicting versions. One version says he's dead, the other version said he survived. So I'm going to play for you what ZBC said right now again before we, we conclude here so that you can understand what I'm saying. So there is a version that says he died, which is the first version that came out. So the first version said he died, this one here. If you go to Majera Gyros, it said he died. And these are the first people to produce this news. And I believe this is a military account. Remember, the Zimbabwe military has been deplatformed. They don't have anywhere to speak. The platforms have been taken away from the Zimbabwe military. So I believe that this is an account which is being run by the Zimbabwe military. And this came out in the morning yesterday. Then in the evening at 8 p.m., this is what the ZBC said. The Zimbabwe Defense Forces ZDF has confirmed the death of four people, including army officers, in a road traffic accident which occurred near battlefields between Kwekwe and Kadoma this Tuesday. Brigadier General Shadrick Veja survived the accident. Right, so there are two versions. One who says General Veja died and one who says General Veja is alive. So I believe that if he isn't alive, they are keeping him somewhere secret. The military guys are keeping him somewhere secret. But the Chuenga faction is getting decimated uh, on a daily basis. And this is part of the succession matrix. You are going to see a lot more happening as we go into the post Mnangagwa era. Mnangagwa is being sidelined slowly. And the guys that are coming in are going to fight each other to the death. And this is what you're seeing here. Uh, let's see who comes out on top, the dynasty, uh, the Chuenga group, or the third force. But I believe that the third force is very, very strong. It's made up of more people than either of these two factions. So the, the Mafidi dynasty and the Chuenga faction, they are smaller than the third force, which is much more bigger which has got business, military, and uh, political players. So I think we're done for today. So happy Independence Day to you all. And this is a special day to me. Uh, in my family, we've got twins that were born on the 18th of April. So I thank God for this day, amazing day. And I hope that our country does not become one of those countries that fail to manage a critical moment. This is a critical moment. What is going to happen? from now going forward. I said this to you before the election. You have never seen it. So the things that happened from election to today, and then from today to where we're going, which is a new era, you have never seen it. It's going to be extremely difficult period, period for Zimbabwe, especially with the Ziggy Ziggy, the Zig now. Thank you very much everyone for watching and a good day.